What's cool about Breaking Dawn is that the wolves have a much bigger role. The wolves are both the bad guys and the good guys. And they, they are the pivotal characters in the movie in a lot of ways. Jake, I can do this. Well, the first scene is the lumberyard scene. The scene is about you know, the alpha males confronting each other, Jacob finding himself as a alpha wolf. We got to start at the very beginning of the process, right from the scripting stage, they sent us the script. When Bill presented the script to us, he said, well, I've got a scene with a bunch of talking wolves, and I don't want an animated movie to break out in the middle of my film. When I originally did the boards, it wasn't in a lumber yard. I think it was in a clearing in a forest when I did the original boards. By the time they decided they wanted to shoot it, they scouted out a great lumber yard, and so they wanted to switch it there. So in our, then we did our animatic, we created a lumber yard set. Phil and Devin, our, our survey supervisor, went to the location and they took extensive photographs and did a survey there. And then we started doing previs. We got the, the Berkeley Tippett Studio players and we pulled everybody together and we did a scratch track of all the dialogue to play out in the timing of the script. We have to protect the tribe before it's too late. Now, before it's born, no other option. So we have a, a Norwegian Jacob. I wasn't going to follow you or anyone else. Basically, the animators have something to work with. We actually had a performance. Even if it was rough, uh, it gave us a starting point. The animator here got to study a lot of wolf locomotion. So they got to know how a wolf runs, how it walks, how it canters, how it transitions. The, the key to the whole thing was planning in the choreography and working that out with Bill. One of the things that we really had to pay attention to was the fact that we didn't have a lot of time to shoot the thing. We need to determine, okay, how many different camera positions do we have? How many different lighting setups do Full we have? camera, please. And we shot that scene, which was God, it's, it's three or four pages, action. and we shot it all the place, the entire scene, in a day and a half. We've got the giant white cardboard standy wolves, which help everyone understand how big the wolves are, where they're coming from, and it gives us an opportunity to run around like silly people with these giant wolves. We know exactly where we're going, we know exactly where the camera's going to be, we know exactly what the characters are doing and where the wolves are going to be. It's just a matter of lining everything up. The other big challenge was the fact that they're not allowed to talk, um, but there's a lot of communication that has to go back and forth. Finding the right balance of pantomime and you know getting just the right look or just the right head shake versus these voices that are in their heads. I think that in the end, they actually ended up dropping a bunch of dialogue because you could see from the eyes and the pantomime and the head cocks, you know, what exactly the wolves were thinking. Now we started to add facial performance, but we got to do it without using their mouth and lip sync. You can see Seth is more concerned. You can see we started adding layering, with playing with the ears. But here you see the final animation. He's using his head and neck to deliver his dialogue. It's happening right on that pitch. We're trying to sort of draw your eyes sort of towards his performance. Every time we do one of these shows, we get a new tool to, you know, to make the wolves look better and better. Typically what we use, we use these spotlights, which are very sort of sharp, kind of like sunlit looks. With an area light, it's like a very big, soft light, like a soft box, which actually makes the wolves look much more realistic and will fit into a cloudy environment like Forks, Washington, really well. For us, the scene was like, this is the scene where Jacob becomes a man, you know, as a wolf, ironically. What's fun about this is that it means a lot to a lot of different people. You know, one of the things doing visual effects that you're allowed to do is, you know, kind of go from the cradle to the grave, you know, so you can see the entire process of, of a motion picture. The lumberyard scene, it's the first time in a long time that Tippett has been able to really dig into kind of emotional performances from our CG characters. I think that we will walk away from these films feeling like we did a good job creating a satisfying character for the movies.